In an earlier video in this playlist, I described abstract vector spaces and the axioms they satisfy. The next topic I'd like to introduce are subspaces, which are in a sense, smaller vector spaces. I'll do this by developing your intuition for them through two basic mathematical concepts, relations and structure. By the end of the video, the precise definition of a subspace should become crystal clear. Okay, so let's get to it. One of the most basic ideas in mathematics is a set, which is just a collection of objects, any objects. A set has no structure. It doesn't even have a notion of whether one object in the set is larger or smaller than another. It simply consists of the objects, nothing more, nothing less. Now, if all we had were a set, it would be extremely difficult to do anything interesting mathematically. However, things become much more interesting if we have a way of relating the objects in the set. The various ways that objects in a set can be related all fall under the concept of a relation. And one of the most common examples of a relation is what mathematicians call ordering. This means that there is a meaningful way of saying whether some object is greater than or equal to another object. Another common example is a function. Since a function maps an element in a set to exactly one other element, this creates a specific relation between set elements. Now there are many other relations one can define on the objects in any given set. And depending on which relation you choose, this gives rise to different mathematical structures, with one of them being those subspaces we're trying to understand. Perhaps the most basic structure one can form is with the ordering relation I mentioned just a moment ago. By taking a set, any set, and associating some notion of ordering to it, this adds just a small amount of structure to it. So what used to be just a plain old set is now a new structure, an ordered set. Now, if instead of an ordering, one associated the set with the operations of addition and multiplication, then a more sophisticated structure emerges, an algebraic field. And these operations allow one to take two objects in the field and either add or multiply them without ever leaving the structure. Now, vector space also has these same operations defined on it, but its structure is a bit more involved. For vector space, addition is an operation that takes any two vectors and associates them to another vector. But multiplication is not a relation between two vectors. Rather, it is a relation between a vector and a scalar, which lives in the underlying field, that ends up producing another vector. Okay, so now we are ready to see just what a subspace is. If you take any subset of a given vector space and look at it on its own, apart from the rest of the larger space, the question you should ask yourself is whether this smaller space is also a vector space. If you keep the same notions of addition with vectors and multiplication with scalars from the same underlying field, does it maintain the same structure? If it does, then it's a subspace. If it doesn't, then it's not a subspace. It doesn't have the right structure on the set. And it turns out that there's a very useful theorem that says that you only need to check three conditions to determine if this subset is a subspace. The zero vector needs to be in the set, it must be closed under addition, and it must be closed under scalar multiplication. So if these three things are satisfied, then the structure has been preserved and the subset is indeed a subspace. Now, since a subspace is any subset of a vector space that is itself also a vector space, this means that any given vector space will have multiple subspaces. The two subspaces that will always exist for any vector space V is V itself and the zero subspace. However, depending on the vector space, there could be many more subspaces of varying sizes or dimension, a topic I'll explain in more detail in an upcoming video. So now that we've journeyed through these examples, illustrating the concepts of relation and structure and how subspaces fit into all this, Here's a definition that you'd see in any linear algebra textbook. As you can see, the requirement is that the subset needs to have the structure of being a vector space in order to be a subspace. I hope that with the intuition I provided, this makes complete sense to you now.